they couldn't handle me in the school and they said they couldn't have me back. I get up about three o'clock in the afternoon and I come in about three or four in the morning. I haven't been to school for a long time. In Britain, 2,000 teenage girls are branded unteachable every year. Do you know what? Stuff the stuff. What happens to these girls? Many drop out of the system completely, never to return to education. I've beaten quite a few people up and I've got into trouble with the police for it as well. But one extraordinary teacher is risking everything to give these teenage girls one last chance. I'd describe this school as a Humpty Dumpty school. And the kids that come here are often broken and need to be put back together. Can she succeed where everyone else has failed? My life would just be falling apart if the school wasn't here. On Southampton's Thornhill Estate lies a glimmer of hope for Britain's unteachables. The Serendipity Centre is an independent secondary day school for young people with behavioural, emotional and social difficulties and Asperger's Syndrome. Most of the pupils have been permanently excluded from mainstream schools and all have a statement of special educational needs. What's unique about Serendipity is that it caters solely for girls and its special approach could help mainstream schools in understanding the needs of girls like these. It's the last week of term before Christmas. Each morning the staff meet the girls as they arrive by taxi. They've been referred to Serendipity by Hampshire and neighbouring authorities and some have up to an hour's journey to school. If it's been a lot of traffic, they've been in a taxi a long time, they can be quite stroppy. Um, or if it's been a, quite a nice journey, they come in, they'll be happy to see us. So it's always changeable and you never know what to expect. Often they're just relieved to be in school because of whatever's happened the night before. They're just quite relieved that they're in school and, and it's a place where they feel safe and they're with people that they feel safe with so they just really want reassurance from us and maybe just a little pat on the back or a little cuddle. Every morning begins with breakfast for all the girls. For head teacher Sue Tinson, it's the most important part of the school day. We call it start right. Um, basically, we'll sort of work out in the first two minutes when the kids arrive what they've been doing the night before and really what their night was like the night before, where they stayed. You get a lot at breakfast where the kids are bantering and listen to whether they've eaten last night or even this morning and really just sort of what frame of mind they're in. Some of the main issues that, that the girls are dealing with Often drug abuse, alcohol abuse, putting themselves at risk sexually, um, you know, lack of support at home. Experiences in education have, have failed. Many are on the road just to press the self-destruction button. Many are involved with youth offending. And many before coming to Serendipity have a very bleak future. Sorry, who's this? Have we got a new girl? Yeah. Hello, where did you start? <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> you're right. Yeah. Oh, you're cold. It's cold. Yeah. Such is the seriousness of these girls' situations that some are under protection orders and cannot be filmed. Hello. Good to see you. It's a stranger. Sue set up Serendipity in April 2006. She currently has ten pupils, all with very different but complex needs. My first school that I went to. I got kicked out of that because I got bullied for like because of colour my hair. And then one day I just turned around and smacked someone and I got excluded. I did try and tell teachers in that before, but they didn't listen. So I had to sort it out myself. <laughs> but when I was in like primary schools and mainstream mainstream schools, I just stuck out like a sore thumb. I was like always the one in trouble. I was always the one getting the blame. 
I was never in any of my lessons. I was always kicked out of them, always being excluded to a point when they didn't want me back. I was like the first person to have ever been excluded in the primary schools. I went to pre, and that was crap because you didn't really have no discipline or anything. They would just kick off and you just get arrested straight away. All previous schools had given up on these teenage girls. So what prompted Sue to think she could do any better? I was just frustrated working in different SEM provisions that were predominantly boys and then with a few girls out on the peripheral who, in my opinion, weren't really being left out of education. Although one or two did attend, they weren't doing an awful lot when they were actually there. Okay, so. Sue aims to improve the outcomes of the girls by removing their barriers to learning, using strong attachment methods and building self-esteem. Exactly right, I did. Well done, you. So why do you think she is making this advertising campaign? What's the message behind this one? Not a lot. It's because she's a vegetable area and she doesn't want animal skin to be cut. The most challenging part of my job is to make them feel that they can achieve something. They come into English especially saying, I can't write, I can't read, don't even bother. Because they've been told by so many people that they just can't do it. <laughs> if the model's under pressure, what does it do to teenage girls? Most secondary schools will try their hardest to encompass everyone into the curriculum, but they've got the boundaries of the curriculum. Whereas here, we can make the curriculum fit around the individual child. I mean, Sophie, for instance, in this lesson, her main target was to stay in one place for a lesson, and she achieved it. Throughout the day, each girl is rewarded if they achieve their own personal targets. The targets are purposefully modest, a way of building achievement and self-esteem. OK, so well done, you girls. You, young lady, yeah, what? have stayed in my lesson the whole oh, time. time. And I think you need to be congratulated on that. Yeah. If I could do that. Sophie is 14 years old and is Serendipity's newest pupil. She's currently being cared for in a foster home. Some of us are in foster care. That's all right in this school, but say in like other schools, there might be like There's two no or three people. Well. Might, they might be like just you and another person in foster care and you don't know each other. And then like in here, there's like all of us have got sort of the same problem. Five percent. Sophie's been here a month. She's still very unsettled, um, and Sophie at the moment is, is bouncing. You know, she's, she is a tigger. She has ADHD, and they're trying to sort of balance her, her medication at the moment. That is your lovely work that I have lovingly prepared for you. I don't want to do it. I feel ill. You always feel ill, little must have Okay, I don't. She is this weekend with Mum and that will certainly cause her anxiety because, you know, she won't know what it will look like, who will be there, you know, what, what Mum's got planned for Sophie. And Sophie will have her own agenda already planned, so that's why she's bouncing. Sophie, Sophie, work in the box, please. At the moment with Sophie, it's simply a matter of trying to find what gap she's got in her knowledge. She's missed so much school, just trying to find out what she can do. Unfortunately, she won't show me what she can do. I have to try and figure out what she can do just by asking questions or just by getting her to do an odd question here and there and try and put it all together like a jigsaw puzzle. Tomorrow, we are going to do that sheet. In a bit. A lot of these youngsters have been rejected from the educational system. Many of them are totally, you know, disengaged to learning. They couldn't care less if they came here or not. At the beginning, many of them could not give two hoots whether they attended or not. And, you know, you've got to respect that that's for a reason. On top of their core subjects, the curriculum allows each girl to get involved in afternoon activities outside of school. Right, 14 year old Shanice has been given a focus for her energy that she lacked elsewhere. She came to Serendipity 11 months ago after being excluded from a pupil referral unit on her second day. My mum skips better than that. At the time, her mum was fighting cancer and struggling to keep control of her. 
Got to build that stamina up, Shanice. Come on, push him out, push him out. I was out of school for two years. I was just out seconds. Seconds. roaming the streets, fighting, yeah, just smashing on. things up. Five seconds, come on. The fighting's starting to gradually get worse. And the uh, police started coming around more often. The fights were getting worse. Police were getting more in the case. And no, left. I would have, probably would have easily been in prison by now. Three, down you go. The way I was treated in mainstream school, the teachers didn't like me because the way I was, I was always in trouble, always out of the classroom, doing work in like, a big room on my own. They didn't want me back at any of the other schools. And then we managed to find serendipity. The way they helped me when I was kicking off, when I was losing my temper, the way that they dealt with it, they managed to keep everything cool, managed to talk you in a way that you can understand because when you're angry and like you've got just teachers just nagging in your face and that you just can't I just can't deal with it it's the way they just have like, a calm approach and that and they just manage to deal with it the, the most important ingredients for the success of serendipity because it has been incredibly successful I think the main ingredients is respect and it's, it's respecting that, that, you know, these kids, you know, are, are physically damaged or mentally damaged or, you know, hurting, feel rejected for whatever reasons. You know, they've been referred to serendipity for a reason. If they could survive in mainstream schools or proves, they'd be there. You know, so the needs of all the youngsters that come here are, are very different. But the, the one ingredient that works with every one of them is respect. Another important part of Serendipity's ethos is that it adopts a holistic approach to the girls' well-being. They have regular sessions with Dawn, the school's full-time therapist. She uses techniques which are specifically aimed at girls to help break down barriers. This is not what I would call the therapy. This is the, the, like the, the build-up to the therapy. This is like the build-up of trust. Because if you've got no trust, if it's very clinical and they just come in they're not going to open up to you. You've got to build a relationship, and this could take sometimes weeks, or it could just take, you know, days. It just depends what sort of child you're, you're with, really. It, does. it is really important. I think that we'd just all be running wild if we didn't have it, because we'd just be coming in with um, loads and loads of baggage and, like, nowhere to empty them, sort of thing. 14-year-old Georgie came to Serendipity 15 months ago. She'd been permanently excluded from her secondary school and pupil referral unit for violent outbursts. She's been in and out of care since the age of seven and was becoming involved in risky behaviour. Life was just crap, basically. I was always out doing things I shouldn't be doing. I wouldn't think twice about walking three miles on my own at three o'clock in the morning in the shortest skirt sort of thing. I didn't care. But I never felt safe. Georgie's family was rocked by the death of several close family members and the suicide of her sister. My nan died, and, and my sister, and like my auntie Joy. So my mum like turned to alcohol. So we was arguing really badly. It was horrible because I'd see her in like states when she couldn't move, and like she's come home with black eyes and stuff, and it's really scary and because you don't know what's happened to her because she can't remember. It's really scary. She still drinks now, but not as heavy. And I, I do want her to stop, but then, I, but then I ask her to stop and I feel guilty for asking her to stop because it's the only thing she can turn to. Like, mum don't have a school like I've got where there's people to turn to. Mum's only got the drink, so that's about it. During the therapy, Dawn uses several methods to help the girls come to terms with their past experiences. Playing with toy figures can often be revealing. It happened recently with one of the girls. Um, there's a couple of characters that she'd put in and she, she buried them in the sand and said that they were having a very slow death. So, you know, that was her way of gaining control over a situation and also gaining control over her anger. I mean, in the doll's house, that really gives me more of an idea of what's going on at home. 
but they're more the family dynamics, you know, who's in charge, is it, you know, chaos at home or is it well structured? So lots of things come out of the doll's house and they may think they're just sort of playing. Are you feeling better now because you're not feeling very well, are you? For many of the girls, serendipity provides stability in their otherwise chaotic lives. I've been in school many a times with like all my clothes thinking, where am I going tonight? And like Sue's actually stayed there with me, like sorted out where I'm going to be staying, like just for that night and stuff. Mm -hmm. like, if school went there now, I'd probably be out about in the streets, being naughty. So then whatever I wanted to do, basically, just sticking my things up to the rest of the world. One of the things that you've got to convince these youngsters is no matter what upbringing or background that they've got, they can actually change it. They have the power to change it. And it's about breaking the cycle, because often when you speak to the kids, you'll find that their parents had bad educational experiences, you know, and, and left school with nothing. Um, you know, and, and it's about undoing them. For Sue, breaking the cycle is fundamental to Serendipity's philosophy and is all the more significant as her own childhood experiences resonate with those of some of the girls. Alright, it's your last chance. There's no Wizard of Oz if it's not fine. I was a lap kid. I was in a children's home. They used to say that I was going to go to Borstal. I was in a remedial group, so why was I going to be anything? I never in my wildest dreams thought I was going to be um, a teacher. I never in my wildest dreams thought I was going to make a difference to any, anybody else's life. I was too thick. But actually, when you start believing in yourself, it's, it's one of the most powerful things you can have. Sue believed so strongly in the need for serendipity that she and her husband remortgaged their house and have risked £500,000 worth of debt to realise Sue's vision. People have asked me why I've risked so much into this. People say that I'm brave. Some say my, that I'm incredibly stupid. I think because I knew I could make a difference. Despite Sue's commitment, the complicated nature of the girls' lives means that no day runs smoothly. Morning, Poppet. I got your mum's text. The following morning is no exception. Anybody seen anything up for Sophie? Sophie hasn't gone shopping again, has she? She's not gone down shopping. Can somebody give Pam a ring and see what time she was picked up? Whether she successfully got into the cab? No answer. Who are you trying to get hold of? I'm trying to get hold of Sophie because she hasn't turned up today. And I've just rung the taxi company and they said that they turned up but the taxi got sent away and we cannot get hold of carers. So no Sophie until we know what's happening. So what do you do next? I mean what I will do is I will phone carer um, and I'll leave it 10 minutes phone again. If not, I'll phone social worker and find out what's going on. Because often the case could be that they're not where they should be or something's happened during the night and then we need to find out what's happened and hopefully get them into school, even if I go out and get them. Listen, if you get any problems getting Sophie back, just call me and I'll get a car out to you. Thanks, Pam. All right, love, bye. OK, she's in court, she's in the police station. She's having to give a statement. Apparently her and a number of other young people were found in a stolen car last summer speeding. Um, she's given a statement. They spoke to mum last night. Mum has written a letter. Pam will have responsibility in signing right. papers for Sophie. Um, so who's going to bring her in? She's going to bring her in. I said, if there's any problems, give me a call and um, we'll get a car over to her. But she said, no, that's, that's fine. She'll sort it out. Funny because she hasn't spoken about it, has she? No, Sophie hasn't yeah. mentioned it. Stolen car joyriding. But there was a number of young people. I think Sophie was just a passenger. Um, signatures uh, have now been passed over to Pam. Okay. All right. There's never a dull moment, is there? It just shows the busy lives that these young people have. What happens in the girls' lives outside of school is beyond Sue's control. So she regularly dedicates time to teaching them how to keep themselves safe. Right, right, five things you know you are going to be doing over Christmas. As the Christmas holidays are fast approaching, Sue is running a PSHE lesson on the dangers of drinking. Be honest, I'm not going to send these home in a file. 
the hardest or the most testing part of the job is what happens outside the school hours. We can work a whole term and find that children are not drinking, they're not doing drugs, and then there's a holiday. And it's soul destroying when they go back to their old ways. So, JB, can you tell us something positive about drinking? How it makes me feel. And how does it make you feel? Free. Free? Yeah. Couldn't you run down a field and feel free? No. You don't get the same feeling? No. What else have you got? Gets rid of my real feelings. Gets rid of your real feelings? Yeah. OK, number three? I've got number three. 14-year-old JB has recently left care to go back to her mum, but life at home is still chaotic. Yeah, I've been through loads of stuff, like in and out of care and beating quite a few people up and I've gotten into trouble with the police for it as well. So, but I'm on my final warning because of it and I've been kicked out of all my schools because of it. I don't see any of my family apart from my sister and my mum. I've got to do like most of the stuff at home on my own. My mum and my sister do out, but I do most of it. And I, I don't know, it's just, I feel a lot older than I should do. I feel like I haven't like lived my life properly. I know that sounds like really sad and pathetic, but that's how I feel. So what happens when you start sobering up? You feel like <laughs> Can we use nicer language? You've got to question what kind of feelings a child's having to block out by drink. You know, they have lots and lots of very strong feelings. And for her, the way out of it is to just drink herself silly so she can't actually think of anything or feel anything. So, actually, temporarily, <coughs> you've got rid of awful feelings. Yeah, but then you just crack open another can, don't you? But there's going to be some point that something's got to stop. Either you die of liver failure. Oh, my liver's out the window already. <laughs> I don't really care. So what else could what else could JB do instead of just drinking? About these feelings, what what do you think? Talk. Talk to somebody. Mrs. Tinson. She's more like a mate than a head teacher. You know where you stand with her. Like you know that you can talk to her. You know that you've got to respect her and you know that you've got to abide by her rules like any other school but like she helps you out a lot because my mum's had problems with like bailiffs and shit, and like she's out she's helped my mum out and she's helped me out before as well and like when my mate died on train tracks she, she helped me through that she like she bought well she bought me flowers to put on his grave for him and she didn't, she didn't have to do that. I can't stop you drinking over I'm Christmas. On the streets no more, aren't I? But when you start getting to here, you guys are unsafe. All right, so what can you do to ensure that you're safe? Because I'm not going to stop you drinking. I know that, JP. Yeah, it, it, it'd be like trying to stop the, the Pope praying. You, know you need to know your limit. All right? And you need to know that when things go wrong, there's people around you that you can trust. You know, the bottom line, I'm saying to you, whatever you drink, kids, you need to stay safe. I'm not going to be with you over Christmas. All right? Are you and on the other end of the phone? I am on the other end of the phone. But equally, I don't want calls at 3 o'clock in the morning telling me that you're in Paul Hospital. You know, you've just been raped. Because I'm thinking I'm standing here wasting my time. The final week of term is drawing to an end. It's a time of year that most children look forward to, but for some of the girls at Serendipity, this is not always the case. It's a really difficult time of the year, Christmas. You know, you turn the television on and, um, you know, all the adverts are a mum and a dad, little boy, little girl, the golden retriever, whole table full of lovely foods, lovely colours and, you know, Christmas carols and, you know, real fairy tale Christmas. How many people in reality get that? For many of my kids, it's, it, it's not a family. I probably know of four kids that there will not be a Christmas dinner on the table. I think I've got three kids that are not sure where they're, they're going to be Christmas Day. Even up till now, today, um, we don't know where three of our kids are going to be Christmas Day. And they don't know, and that, that, that has massive implications. It's a difficult time. It's a difficult time for many families. We wish you Merry Christmas and the
Christmas do I added. It's just another day, isn't it? Nothing special about it. Just not getting into the Christmas thing. Probably because I know I ain't having one this year. For many of them, they've got two and a half weeks, you know, without us, um, very little contact with school. We've got a number of visits for what I call my hotspot kids, you know, kids that I know that will fall on the wayside if we just ignore them for two and a half weeks. You know, if, they, if we haven't seen them for three or four days, we're likely to put right what's gone wrong. If we don't see them for two and a half, three weeks, it's probably a lot harder. You know, they're probably back into whatever they were doing. Um, it's harder to undo. The girls attending Serendipity are the lucky ones, but there are thousands more dropping out of the system. Could Serendipity's model be the answer for girls with special educational needs? I know Serendipity is successful. I've got kids that have, haven't been in school for three years. I've got kids that have been excluded from two or three previous provisions. They're here and they enjoy it. And the biggest thing is, is you know, they're attending. My attendance is very high. How do you raise the aspirations of a teenage girl? You surround them in people that have, you know, aspirations for them, that want them to be something and encourage them to be something and go on to do, you know, have a dream. I, I can make a difference just teaching good, good lessons, but it's even more than that. It's empowering the, the kids to change their lives for the better. And I think any decent teacher will want that. Mm -hmm.